You're watching Alabama Public TV, Kazoo's Place. Today's mission is fueled by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and viewers like you. I always feel the need to prove my evil to the world. So what shall I steal today? Ah, I have just the thing. With one theft, History will be changed forever. Mighty Mediva, report. A ship can leak, a house is drafty. I'm mean, I'm sly, I'm feeling crafty. Wow. Listen, I'm sending you through the time port to England around the year 1092. There's something very special I want you to steal. Bring it back to me in this loot orb when you have it. Now, vanish. Time pilots, Mediva just stole something from the past. You've got 28 minutes to get it back, or history will change forever. Boot up the chrono computer. Launch the time drones! Power up the engines! Now get going! We're on the case and we're chasing her through history. Chrono skimmer, engines hot. Bio villains, evil plot, our brave squadron leader will help us defeat her. And here's your time pilot squadron leader, Kevin Shinnick! Kevin? Kevin! Hey, welcome aboard, everybody! But you hang on tight because we've got a very big mission, but very little time. So let's begin our journey by meeting our time pilot, starting with Rebecca Sharouk. Come on, Rebecca, nice to see you. And Wilfredo Dallas. Nice going, Wilfredo. And Jeff Wilhelm. Good to see you, Jeff. All right, time pilots, welcome aboard. Now, you've heard the mission from the chief. We're going to start by equipping each of you with 100 power points. Great. Now, pilots, our nanoprobes have revealed the time and place where Carmen has sent Mediva. So let's get things started. Bridge to engine crew. Let's warp to the time of the crime. Chief, we've arrived at our time target. What's our mission profile? Squadron, you time travel to around the year 1092. Location, England. Back in 1066, Francis William, Duke of Normandy, invaded England. The English had just beaten an invading army from Norway, but they lost to William, who conquered England and became king. This closely linked England with Western Europe, forever changing England's culture. Then, around 1092 A.D., these events were depicted on a 230-foot-long cloth called the Bayou Tapestry. Thought to be embroidered by women, it became a priceless historical record in the centuries to come. Or so history told us till now, when Mediva blew back in time, and it was bye-bye Bayou Tapestry. Thanks a lot, Chief. All right, time pilots, for 10 power points, what historical event does the Bayou Tapestry depict? Is it the Norman Conquest, the First Crusade, or the Battle of Waterloo? Remembering the clues we just heard. Invasion launched in 1066. William, Duke of Normandy, conquers England. 
and depicted in Bayou Tapestry around the year 1092. All right, guys, those are the clues. Lock onto an answer as soon as you have an idea. Great, what a quick group. All right, Rebecca, what did you say? The Norman Conquest. All right, Wilfredo? The Norman Conquest. And Jeff? The Norman Conquest. You guys sure about that? Well, good, because it's the Norman Conquest. 10 points for everybody. Way to go, guys. You know, pilots, if one of you can save the history of textiles and capture Carmen, you'll win a complete multimedia computer system. But the big question is, where is Mediva taking the tapestry? Because I know one to... Hey, it's the clue finder. It's locked on to someone in the future. Let's bring him on board and see if they can help us. Shut the door. I'm not ready yet. What? Shut the door. Oh, uh, sorry? Uh, so, uh, do you guys have a nice trip here? Good, good. Uh, now I'm ready. Uh, hey, hey, everybody, it's the clue finder. It's locked on to someone in the future. Let's bring him on board and see if they can help us. Greetings. It is I, Wyna Kapak, ruler of the Incas. Well, hi, I'm Kevin Shinnick, squadron leader of the Time Pilots. Uh, say, why are you wearing a Time Pilot uniform? It is my custom. When I became king, I toured my kingdom. And before entering each town, I stopped and put on the clothing worn by the locals. Oh. You see, we Incas rule a vast empire made up of many conquered peoples. Oh, it covers uh, a big part of Western South America, right? America? What is America? America, it, it, uh, never mind. Anyway, by putting on local clothes, I encourage people to accept me as their ruler. Helps me fit right in. I'll take Norman Conquest, Kevin. Hey, would you cut that out? Uh, so, uh, I guess clothes are a big part of your culture, huh? Not just clothes, but clothing in general, cloth in general. In fact, conquered peoples pay tribute to the Inca in cloth. Kevin, I'll take Aztec culture for 200. I said knock it off. That's, that's not even our show. Well, uh, tell me, what do the Spanish conquistadors think of your custom? Spanish? Who are the Spanish? Well, the Spanish, they're, they're... Uh, skip it. Anyway, I have now fit in so well here, it's time for you all to accept me as your ruler. Oh, really? You, fetch me a sweet potato. I'm hungry. You two, get working on a giant tribute cloth for me. And you? Me? Tell me where the ruler traditionally sits. Oh, the ruler? Oh, yeah, well, the ruler, if he were gonna be here, he would sit right, uh, right here, yeah. If he's a really big ruler, he ah. sits right there, yeah. Uh-huh, that's where they sit. Comfy? Oh, yes. Good. See you later. Okay, guys. Pilots, you heard the clues from Hawaiian Kapak. Tell me where in time Mediva is hiding. Is it 1140s, 1490s, or 1730s? Remembering the clues we just heard. Hawaiian Kapak rules vast Inca Empire in South America. Before arrival of Spanish conquistadors, and woven fabrics important to Inca culture. All right, guys, those are the clues. Lock onto an answer as soon as you know. All right, Rebecca, what did you say? The 1490s. All right, Wilfredo? 1140, um. 1140s, what'd you say? 1140s. Okay, and Jeff? I chose the 1490s. All right, correct answer is the 1490s. <laughs> 10 points for Rebecca and Jeff. Wilfredo, don't worry about it. It's early on in the mission. You know, pilots, the Inca were conquered by the Spanish in the 1500s, but native textiles were still produced and, like the Incas, Spanish rulers accepted it as a tribute from the conquered peoples. Right now, let's keep moving. So, bridge to engine crew. Let's warp to the 1490s. Great, pilots. We follow Mediva to the 1490s, but she's about to do some globe hopping in the 1400s, so it's time for global pursuit. Listen closely. Watch the globe on your screen and buzz in after I finish the question. If you're right, you're gonna get five power points. And if you're wrong, you're gonna lose five. All right, remember, we're in the 1400s, but we're referring to places by their modern day names. And here we go. Mediva is invading the country where Ottomans conquer the city of Istanbul and end Byzantine Empire. Going to Rebecca. Turkey. Correct, very nice. Now she's holing up in the nation where Emperor Young Lo builds a walled palace called the Forbidden City. Going this time to Wilfredo. China. Yes, China it is. Mediva deported herself to the nation where Ferdinand and Isabella are expelling the Jews. Going again to Wilfredo. Spain. Correct, Spain. 
Next, she sprouted up in the country where the Wars of the Roses are being fought. When this time to Rebecca. England. Yes, good call. Mediva staked out the country where Joan of Arc defeats English invaders. Join this time to Jeff. France. Correct, France it is. Very nice, guys. But Mediva's still on the loose with the Bayou Tapestry. Question is, where is she? What's happening? Guys, all our communications are down. Still traipsing after the tapestry time, Tykes. <laughs> Bumblebee, Gizzard, and Stench of Old Moss. Have you heard the legend about Betsy Ross? Most think she sewed the first Stars and Stripes flag. That may be the truth, or it could be a gag. If you trace back her story to the mouth of the horse, you'll find Betsy's grandson is history's first source. He's promoting his granny when Grant is the prez. That's one reason many will doubt what he says. How could a true story be so long delayed? 94 years since that first flag was made. Did Betsy do it? The debate remains tense. And this wicked witch won't end your suspense. <laughs> okay, now which one of you guys invited her? Huh, Rebecca, was it you? No. You sure? Okay, I said no guests, remember? No guests. All right, guys, you heard the clues. For 10 power points, tell me the year where Mediva is hiding. Is it 1820, 1870, or 1900? Remember the clues we just heard. Betsy Ross's grandson begins her legend. 94 years after Stars and Stripes flag is first made, and Ulysses S. Grant is president. All right, guys, again, those are the clues. Wait a second. Okay, Wilfredo saying, don't rush me. I think I know this one. Rebecca, what did you say? 1870. Okay, Wilfredo? 1870. And Jeff? 1870. You guys are great. Correct answer is 1870. <laughs> Ten points for everybody. You know, pilots, the debate over Betsy Ross continues to this day. Truth is, we may never know the truth. But one thing is certain, we'll know a whole lot less if we fail to save history soon. So let's keep things moving. Bridge to engine crew. Let's warp to 1870. in Times Square. Uh, look out for that bus! Better do a data boost, now! Uh, all right, pilots, looks like Medivh is up to her old tricks. We made it to 1870, but it's time for a data boost. So pilots, I'll give you a name. Your job, buzz in and tell me if I've named a fabric or an alien creature from the Star Wars films. Remember, your choices are fabric or Star Wars creature. Okay, here we go. Nankeen. Join to Rebecca. Fabric. Correct. That's a cotton fabric originally made in China. Tauntaun. Join to Rebecca. Star Wars creature. Yes, Star Wars creature. Tauntauns are the kangaroo-like animals ridden on the planet Hoth in Empire Strikes Back. Rodian. Join to Rebecca. Star Wars creature. Yes, again Star Wars creature. Greedo the bounty hunter is a Rodian. Lindsay Woolsey. Going again to Rebecca. Fabric. Correct. A coarse fabric made of wool and linen or cotton. Rayon. Going again to Rebecca. Star Wars creature. Actually, that is fabric. It's a man-made fiber produced from the plant substance of cellulose. You must have seen that movie a lot of times and been sewing while you were watching it, I guess. All right, guys, that was great data boost piles. And just a reminder that all our data has been verified by Encyclopedia Britannica. All right, now, before our next call, I just gotta, you know, I'm starving, guys, and I haven't had a chance to, to eat my sandwich, so I'm just gonna take a little bite. Mmm, that's so good. I'll tell you what, I'll put it away for later. That's really rude to eat in front of you. So, guys, where's it? Collision alert! Race for impact! Oh, God. Oh, oh, oh. Wait a second, guys, wait a second, wait a second. That ship looks a lot like ours. Let's see who's on board, shall we? Oh, yeah, hi, hi. I'm, I'm Kevin from Three Days in Your Future. Oh, phew, sorry, but 
We smacked into you, but something stinks so bad. We, we couldn't pay attention to where we were going. P.U. Whoa. Well, well try and take oh. your mind off it. Oh, <coughs> gosh. My mind is OK. It's my nose that has a problem. Look, why not give us a clue about where to look for Mediva? We need to get the bio tapestry back. Sure, sure, I remember that mission. Mediva's hiding in 1996, just before President Clinton's re-election. The AIDS memorial quilt is on display in Washington, D.C. It weighs 50 tons and covers 24 football fields. Wow, that's huge. Well, the AIDS quilt has nearly 38,000 panels, and each one represents a person who's died from the disease. Friends and relatives can get together to make a panel as a way of remembering a loved one. Gee, I guess fabric work can still bring people together. <sighs> you bet. But listen, now I've got to figure out what that stink is. Smells like it's... Wait a minute. Smells like it's coming from... Oh, look at this. Well, now tell me what knucklehead would stick a tuna sandwich here? Uh, uh... Okay, let's move on, shall we? Boy, I've got quite a nerve calling me a knucklehead, don't I? All right, pilots, we now know where in time Mediva is hiding. Name the two major presidential candidates who challenged Bill Clinton that year. Were they Al Gore and Jack Kemp, Bob Dole and Ross Perot, or George Bush and Ross Perot? I mean, the clues we just heard. The year 1996, huge AIDS memorial quilt in Washington, D.C., and shortly before Bill Clinton's re-election. All right, and we're already in. That's what I like to see. Rebecca, what did you say? Bob Dole and Ross Perot. All right, Wilfredo? Well, Bob Dole and Ross Perot. And Jeff? Bob Dole and Ross Perot. You guys, I can go home early. The correct answer is Bob Dole and Ross Perot. Very nice, guys. Ten points for everybody. Very nice. You know, pilots, as the Bayou Tapestry depicted the Norman Conquest, so the AIDS quilt, in a way, depicts another fierce battle, the one being fought against AIDS. But there's very little time left to save the history of textiles. So let's quickly prepare to make one final leap forward in time, and that means an ultimate data boost. <laughs> Pilots, in an ultimate data boost, each correct answer is worth 10 power points. But if you're wrong, you lose 10, all right? I'll name an item. Your job buzzed in and answer yes if what I've named is pictured in the Bayou Tapestry, or no if it is not. OK, the answer is going to be yes or no. William, Duke of Normandy. I'm going to Jeff. Yes. Good answer. Yes is the answer. The tapestry tells the story of William's conquest of England in 1066. 626 human figures. And this time to Rebecca. Yes. Yes, correct. The tapestry tells its story comic book style with the same characters appearing in frame after frame. Over 200 female characters. Going to Jeff. No. Correct. In fact, only four women appear in the entire tapestry. Halley's Comet. Going again to Jeff. No. No, I'm sorry. The answer is yes. Halley's Comet did, in fact, appear in the sky in 1066. Angela Lansbury. I'm going to Rebecca. No. No, I don't think so. Although, some claim that if you squint the right way at the Bayou Tapestry, a 3D image of Ms. Lansbury will appear. You don't hold me to that, but that's what they tell me. Rifleman. Going to Wilfredo. Yes. No, I'm sorry. No is the answer. Rifles were not yet used when the tapestry was sewn. And finally, dogs. Going this time to Rebecca. Yes. Yes, correct. 35 dogs appear in the tapestry. That was very nice, guys. Let's see what happened. Right now, Rebecca has 195 power points. Wilfredo has 130, and Jeff has 155, which means that Rebecca and Jeff are moving on in the next phase of this mission. But Wilfredo, you did really well, buddy. Give me five, all right. And right now, the chief is here to express our appreciation. I of Lucy, ear of Ricky, that Mediva's mighty tricky. But here's a treat for the fine work you've done. A time net mission pack that's coming your way. Crammed with great stuff like the Wear and Time watch, Chrono Skimmer cap, and Carmen San Diego CD-ROMs. From all of us at Time Net Command, congratulations. Pilots, let's wave goodbye to Wilfredo as he heads back to Time Net Command. You guys ready for your next order from the Chief? Yeah. yeah. All right, Chief, we're ready. Time pilots, the history of textiles is at stake. Get to Washington, D.C. in 1996 and sew up that tapestry. Kevin, you're in command. Aye, aye, Chief. Time pilots, full speed ahead to 1996.
Rock medieval has got the Bayou Tapestry in a Cybersphere. Activate the Loot Tractor Beam. <laughs> I've still got a few spells left. Time pilots. <laughs> hey, we've gotten back the Bayou Tapestry and have it safely on board. Way to go, guys. Plus, you're now one step closer to winning that great multimedia computer system we talked about. But before we continue chasing Mediva, we've got to return the loot to around the year 1092. So let's check in with the Chief to get our flight plan. Chief? Time pilots, you must navigate the Chrono Skimmer through eight events from the history of textiles and clothing, starting at the most recent event and finishing at the least recent event. Here are the events on your flight plan. First nylon stockings sold in the U.S. Naked man streaks during 46th Academy Award show. Buttons and buttonholes come into use in Europe. Grandson of Betsy Ross begins her legend. Tiger Woods gets traditional green jacket as winner of the Masters Golf Tournament. Bayou Tapestry is created. Pockets and trousers introduced. Bruce Banner bursts out of clothes in first Incredible Hulk comic book. That's your briefing time, pilots. Good luck on your journey. Thanks, Chief. All right, Rebecca, you have the higher score. You have the choice of going first or second. I'll go second. All righty, in that case, Jeff, I want you to navigate this chrono skimmer back through time from the most recent event to the least recent event, starting by picking the most recent event on the board. You may begin. Tiger Woods wins Master's Green Jacket. Yes, you've gotten us to 1997. He was the first man of color ever to win the Masters. Naked Man Streaks Oscar Talakest. Yes, you've gotten us to 1974. Streaking or running naked was a big fad in the 70s, but kids, don't try this at home. Banner burst clothes in first Hulk comic. Yes, you've plowed a course to 1962. First nine stocking sold in U.S. Correct, you've gotten us to 1940. Synthetics and silk soon became scarce because they were needed for World War II. Keep going. Betsy Ross's grandson begins legend. Correct, 1870. Buttons come into use in Europe. Okay, going to Rebecca. Tiger Woods wins Master Screen Jacket. Yes, 1997. Naked Man Streaks Oscar Telecast. Correct, 1974. Banner Burst Banner Burst Clothes into Clothes into You've First You got it. Cloth yes, Cloth 1962. Cloth. First nylon stocking sold in U.S. Correct, 1940. Betsy Ross's grandson begins legend. Correct, 1870. Trouser pockets introduced. You've gotten us to the 1580s. Buttons come into use in Europe. Correct, 1200s. Bayou Tapestry created. Bayou Tapestry created around 1092. Rebecca, you've saved history. Give me five. Way to go. Now, I want you to activate the transporter and restore the loot to its proper place in history. That was very, it was tough, guys. It was a very nice job on both of you counts. Uh, right now, you and I are moving on, Rebecca, but Jeff, again, we couldn't have gotten this far without you. You did a very good job, and we've got another mission for you, and the Chief is here to tell you all about it. You've been an outstanding time pilot today, so you get a Time Net mission pack and this portable CD player. Now, top flight time pilots can take their rhythms on the road. Good work, time pilot. Right now, Jeff is piloting the Chrono Skimmer back to the present. But, Rebecca, it's time for us to chase Mediva and Carmen through the Trail of Time. You with me? Let's do it. You got it. Let's go. Look out, Carmen. We're on our way. We're on the case, and we're chasing her through history. Chrono Skimmer, engine's hot. Bio villains, evil plot, our brave squadron lead. made it to the trail of time. You've got to chase Carmen through six time portals by answering her questions. You think you're ready? Yeah. All right. Ready, set, <laughs> go, Rebecca. Go, follow the engine crew to the first portal. It's the 800s AD. What technique do the Chinese use to decorate silks? Stone wash or tie-dye? Tie-dye? All right, way to go, Rebecca. Move on to the second time portal. 
It's 1066. Which battle marks the turning point of the Norman Conquest? Trafalgar or Hastings? Hastings? Okay, you've got four more to go with 63 seconds left. It's 1589. What French king founds a royal carpet and tapestry factory? Henry IV or Louis XVI? Henry IV? Yes, Rebecca, you've captured Mediva. Keep up the good work. It's 1830. Who patents the first practical sewing machine? Timonier or Singer? Timonier. All right. You've got two more to go with 35 seconds left. It's 1942. What is one of the military uses for silk during World War II? Parachutes or bulletproof vests? Parachutes. Vest? Yes, one more. It's 1987. How is the first panel of the AIDS memorial quilt decorated? Needlepoint or spray paint? Needlepoint. All right, turn the wheel. Turn, turn, turn. Almost there. Yes! Way to go, Rebecca! You did it! Congratulations, you've energized the capture crystal. Now take it and place it in the Quartalock chamber to capture Carmen San Diego. <laughs> That was incredible! You feel good? Yeah. You sure? We're very proud of you. You captured Mediva, you captured Carmen, and right now the Chief is here to show you what you've won. You've earned an A1 mission rating today, and with it comes a great multimedia computer system, plus a year of Botanica Online and the CD-ROM encyclopedia. Hey, Time Pilot, I salute you. That was fantastic, and you won the big computer. How do you feel? Great. Good, good for you. And right now, we have to head back to the present. And remember, at Acme TimeNet, history is our job. The future is yours. We're on the case, and we're chasing her through history. Throttle open, thrusters on. Chrono skimmer gets us gone. Pack extra socks, and we'll all be. The clock from the Stone Age to Middle Age to Space Age and back. Tell me where in time is Carmen San Diego? Stop her crime and solve this mystery. Tell me where in time is Carmen San Diego? We're on the case and we're chasing her through history. Nero's fiddle, Lincoln's beard, Newton's apple. Disappeared. All historical information has been verified by Encyclopedia Britannica. This program was produced by WGBH Boston and WQED Pittsburgh. Carmen's journey through time is propelled by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and viewers like you. Over and out, pilot. This is Lynn Thickpin saying, well done. To receive a free copy of the 16-page Carmen San Diego Teacher's Guide with classroom history activities, write to the address you see on the screen.